Sometimes life brings you full circle to a place you've been before to remind you how terrible of a decision buying an old neglected Ferrari really was. Honest Abe was definitely telling the truth when he said this. We've had issue after issue after issue with this car and today we've come full circle. If you can remember, this Ferrari was delivered to me with a very abnormal problem. The car would run once after hooking up its battery, but the second you shut it off and tried to start it again, it would misfire horribly, it wouldn't go into gear, and it sounded like the engine was blown. At this point, on a platform that is over two decades old, most issues and their problems have been well documented, but this problem stumped even the best Ferrari 360 enthusiasts, and for a good reason. At one point before trading hands, someone swapped one of the two engine computers in my car, an engine computer containing different software for a different spec car. The sleuth that made this discovery is my friend Jose, a lead technician at Specialized ECU Repair. Jose was monumental in bringing my Ferrari new life, and even though it was still far from perfect, we got the car running. Then, over a year and five figures later, after replacing several wear components including a clutch and a transmission overall, we thought work was pretty much complete until... The uh, gearbox light is on. Is it clicking back there, Sage? Uh, it's this one. Yeah. And you can feel it. Today I want to explore what is becoming an extremely prevalent issue specifically on the now age Ferrari 360, and how companies like Specialized ECU Repair are constantly having to innovate new solutions to old problems. Redesigning the mousetrap is a tough task, but it's amazing how little change can go a long way. Think about what it used to take to jumpstart your car, and now we have a pack that can easily be carried in one hand powerful enough to start a dead battery. And these little devices just keep getting better and better. Imagine if Apple made a jump pack. This is probably what it would look like. Fantix T8 Apex Jump Start contains a four core cell with 2000 amps of peak current, enough to jumpstart most cars 40 times on just a single charge. To show you how good Fantix new jump pack is, I'm gonna disconnect the battery on my Super Duty. This is a big V8 truck. So what we're replicating here is a car that's battery is completely dead, like most of the cars I pick up at the auction. A standard jump starter will leave you stranded. That's because they rely on reading a little bit of juice coming from the existing battery in the car. But Fantix T8 has a manual override switch. All you do is hold the power and light button down for three seconds and see right there, it says start. It's sending 14 volts to the truck and we're gonna start this truck with just the Fantic hooked up, nothing else. Watch this. Just as if the truck battery is connected, but all that's there our jump pack. And with a built-in Smart Shield chip, the T8 Apex is safe and easy for anyone to use. All this from a jump pack that charges to 100% in just one and a half hours. To check out Fantix T8 Apex for yourself, go ahead and click the link down in the description box. Make sure you use this code right here at checkout because that's gonna get you $15 off your very own T8 Apex. I gotta give a huge thanks to Fantix for making the best battery jump pack I've ever used and for also sponsoring this video. Remember that clicking noise coming out of the throttle body? That's like textbook simple for a failed engine ECU. However, I just had this entire car apart and I figured there's no way I have a failed engine ECU. We've already replaced one in this car. It just doesn't make a whole lot of sense. ECUs don't fail a lot, or do they? The Ferrari 360 is really interesting and the ECU's construction is much different than pretty much every other modern car and in a moment we're going to look into that. But before we decide that we actually have a problem with the engine ECU, there is a sort of mechanical test you can perform with no special tools to see if we indeed have a failed computer. Alright, here are our engine ECUs. There's one here, there's one there. Now as far as I understand, this ECU controls this side of the engine, that one the opposite. So something that we could do as a mechanical test to actually pinpoint whether we do have a failure with, in theory, this side of the ECU since this throttle body is clicking, is actually take this and move them side to side. Both of these ECUs, if you remember when we brought them to Specialized, uh, Jose told us that they both need to be mirror images of each other for the car to run properly. So I'm just going to unplug this, move it over there, and do the same. Hook the ground wires up, and then we're going to fire the car up to see if our throttle body clicking moves from this side to this one. All right, quick swap. Everything is hooked up. This is now the driver's side on the passenger side, and vice versa. Come over here. We shall make sure that I 
Killed the ignition. Yep. We're going to plug our battery in. We're going to turn the ignition on. Now I'm going to get out of the car because I can definitely hear a throttle body clicking and it's right when I flip the key. So one, two, three. It's coming from this side now. So see how I flip from that side to this side? We've got an ECU problem. That should be our bad ECU. Immediately after performing this test, I boxed everything up and shipped it off to Specialized ECU Repair because they're the ones for this job and really one of the only ones around. As far as I understand, there's no official fix for this anymore and that's because Ferrari stopped making these engine computers. Once people figured this out, the engine ECU prices have tripled to quadrupled. It used to be just a couple years ago you could have bought one of these for like four to $500. Now they cost north of $1,500 to two grand. And it's not a question of if your Ferrari 360 ECU will fail. It's it's when it happens to pretty much everybody and as these cars age more computers are going to fail which means there's going to be a demand for these ECUs which again continue to go up in price as the supply continues to be depleted. Now this brought up for a really lengthy personal discussion with Jose. Why can't we repair these ECUs instead of the typical replacement which is what they currently do? And in a moment Jose is going to explain to you why the original units really can't be repaired at least not yet. So what is the ultimate solution? Do we develop a new computer? Do we figure out how to repair the old computers? And this is where we decided the best answer is left off in the hands of you guys. There is somebody watching right now that is going to understand pretty much exactly what's going on here and maybe be able to provide some insight in the comments section below because it is a serious problem. It's only going to get costlier and that leaves an open market for again somebody to capitalize on. Let me pass things over to Jose and figure out exactly what is wrong with these Ferrari 360 computers. Hey Sam, how are you? Here's uh, the bench setup that we have your engine computer hooked up to and want to really give you a quick explanation of what is actually the, the machines and the equipment that we have here. Uh, of course, we have our power supply that supplies the battery voltage, and this is the amperage draw. I have uh, a machine that is designed to simulate the operation of the engine. So I have a crankshaft gener a signal generator along with a camshaft signal. I also have... Uh, normally all the inputs that you have from the engine like the MAF sensor signal, throttle position sensor, water temperature, air temperature. So pretty much this machine is made to simulate a running engine. Also I have attached the Ferrari 360 uh, interface. Uh, so remember this is kind of like a universal part that we use for most of the brands that we repair here and this is made specifically for the 360 where internally all the connections are made to match the pinout of the engine computer from the 360 to our universal uh, engine tester and we have here attached an original uh, throttle position sensor uh, from the 360 and original throttle body so we're going to start the testing of the engine computers First, I'm going to start with the master uh, computer, which is the right side, and we believe this one is the one that is effective. So I'm going to, uh, number one, open the terminal 30, which is terminal uh, 30 for battery power to the computer. Then I'm going to give him the signal from the crankshaft sensor, uh, camshaft, crankshaft, and I'm going to give it the start signal. So a couple things happening right now. I don't see any activity on the ignition coils or the injectors, but most important, we see that the throttle body is doing the clapping, you know, clicking motion that you are experiencing on the car, which is 100% a problem related at this point with the engine computer. So I'm gonna try to also scan the computer we don't get communication because I seems like this computer is for sure is defective 
and in a little bit we're gonna open it to see if we can pinpoint the, the problem but so far this computer is bad all right Tom so we're gonna test the the other computer from the car this is going to be the left side which is the uh, driver's side on the car itself we're gonna test it see uh, what's the condition let me first attach the harness to it and ground it properly so i'm going to give it terminal 30 but one thing that i'm going to do different is you see right here right now we have the alarm is being activated so with the remote i'm going to deactivate the alarm and that is going to give me the okay signal to uh, start the car again i'm going to provide it the crankshaft and camshaft signal for uh, the 360 and then this is going to start at this terminal 15. So right now, throttle body is operating correctly. There's no clicking. And as you can see here on the, on the virtual engine, we have main relay, we have fuel pump activation, we have four ignition coils and four injector trigger signals, and this is a purge valve. So we can tell that this computer is working correctly. It has all the vital signals, throttle bodies uh, working fine. And now we're going to scan it and figure out if there's communication, if there's a, any code. So right away, we can see that already the um, com computer has communicated with the scanner. We can ID it and we can also read codes. Just remember that there's extra codes here because we don't have 100% of all the car connected in our bench. But um, you know we can see that there are there is communication that is not going to be a problem, and uh, we're going to be clearing those codes. So we're in good shape. One computer looks to be okay. Uh, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to retrieve the software out of this good computer, and I'm going to upload that software to a core computer, which is going to be a donor, um, as these computers can be rebuilt at this moment. So let's do that. I'm going to start reading it, programming, and then we're going to retest again. I was able to open the defective computer. This, is, this computer is made by Bosch. It's a Motronic 7.3 uh, computer version. And as you can see here um, on the close-up, the whole computer is made by um, technology that is called hybrid technology where the circuits are bonded directly into a ceramic substrate so a ceramic piece and then you can tell here that the all this is made by a robotic machine so they were made by robotic machines where the actual components that were placed bonded and then a machine will actually stitch all the connections from the board itself to the logic components. To just give you a little bit of perspective, uh, for example, on the size and the density of this uh, computer, this is just a penny. So you can tell the density and the amount of components in such a small footprint of area. Now, when you compare, for example, through a, you know, this one is a BMW 740 computer, uh, you can tell that here, we have the ability of, for example, if this driver for the coil uh, goes bad, we can just easily desolder, replace it, no problem, or desolder one of these resistors or even the microprocessor. And look how many legs they have, but they're completely exposed and the, the correct technique and the professional equipment, we can remove it, replace it, and, and do repairs very easily done with this uh, type of PCB computer, which is pretty much the standard throughout the industry. And of course, this is, this is a computer for a car that is very robust. Most of the components there are military spec and they usually don't go bad. Uh, those, sometimes they do go bad and that's why we, we have the business here. But again, when we compare to the computer in your 360. Uh, this unit is, uh, you know, very robust in the way that is, the connectors are bonded to the aluminum housing. The pins, they go through the, the board and they get encapsulated on this, uh, in this design where you can tell that there's even 
silicon right here. It is the material is kind of like um, you know semi wet, and it's made to protect it from moisture and most important from vibration. I don't think that they are machines made um, by the factory that they are sold to the general public in order to perform repairs on these computers. Um, you know, they're just extremely um, difficult to rework. And, and because of the complexity of the design and how it was manufactured. At this moment, we don't have a way to repair it. And, and you know, what we need to do is extract the software and pretty much reprogram a used unit or a brand new unit that we can find on the market. All right, Sam, so we're done here. Uh, we were able to program an extra computer for you uh, with the correct software. Everything is gonna be plug and play. And um, I'm also dropping a surprise here for you, something that we've been working for a while and I think you're gonna love it. So please let me know how everything goes. Uh, good luck with the car and uh, we'll await for the good news. When Jose fired up the engine simulator and you saw the throttle body clicking on the desk there, that just got me really excited. It's the coolest thing ever. They're literally replicating an entire Ferrari on a computer desk essentially with just a couple of devices. And I hope it's very inspirational to you guys and show you how many needs there are out in the world. Again, think about it. This is a very niche issue that they're solving for a lot of people. There's issues with many other cars that the manufacturers don't support. And they're the guys that figure it out when it has to do specifically with the ECU or other electrical issues. Now, if you're into the technical side of things, I encourage you to follow their YouTube channel. It's right here at Specialized ECU Repair. I'm gonna drop a link down in the description box. And when Jose said he was leaving me a surprise in the box, he wasn't kidding. They've made something that's super cool. Here, let me show you. So when the delivery driver gave me the keys to my Ferrari 360, this is what he handed me right here. And I told him, I'm like, yo, I think you gave me the fob to that Astro van that you got. And he's like, no, no, this is for this car. He pressed the button, you could see it blinking over there. This is what came standard with a Ferrari 360. Now, the first time we were dealing with this ECU issue and I was down at Specialized, they told me that they make spare key sets for the 360, and my car only came with the one fob. So I opted to get another set. They give you two of these and it was like way cheaper than one at the dealer. And the cool thing is if you lose or break yours, they can actually just grab the software off of your mobilizer in the car. They can extract that and then create you a new fob even if you lost yours. But the other cool thing that is, is just way up to modern standards, is it doesn't have that stupid hard to find battery in it anymore. It's got a standard remote fob battery in it. So it lasts way longer too. So this was a big upgrader. So I thought, check this out. Look, this is really amazing. This is the same style key that came on the Ferrari Enzo, the Ferrari F430s. It's got the blade and the fob integrated with the Ferrari logo on it. And the red is just beautiful. Jose, can you make me one in Verde British Racing Green? I'm kidding, I'm kidding. I love this. This is amazing. So like now, you actually feel like you're driving a Ferrari when you pull the keys out of your pocket. You don't have this like clunky looking thing anymore. You got this. So Jose, thank you so much for this. This is amazing. Let's go use it. Let's go start up the car. And guys, if you got a Ferrari 360, check out Specialized ECU Repair. Again, I'm dropping all their information in the description box. So you see over there on the right side, we've got our new refresh ECU. It's got their new style sticker on it. Over here on the driver's side, that's our same old one, the one that's been there since we got the car. Of course, we got this beautiful Enzo style key fob here. Go ahead, hit the button. I'm not sure if I just locked or unlocked those. I think we just unlocked there. Boom, open. You hear the F1 actuator pumping. Get in. Key in the ignition. See, it says check okay right here. That's important. It is telling us our hatch is open. That's because, well, it's open. And we'll go ahead, fire it up. <laughs> Told you if Jose did it, it's gonna work. See all the lights went away? 
Our F1 light isn't on anymore. Hand on the paddle, boom. Feel it jump into first. It's ready to go, this thing. I can't wait to drive it. You know, it's really amazing to think about the numbers. How many Ferrari 360s are really out there? How soon will they need engine computers? Same thing with all the other cars specialized ECU supports because the majority of their business comes from just a few problematic areas and parts that manufacturers no longer support. So without them, guys wouldn't have their cars on the road. So I really appreciate Jose's expertise. And again, niche businesses like specialized ECU repair who can fix situations where the dealership can't anymore. You know, it's just kind of crazy because the dealership focuses in on what's super lucrative to them. And so a really modern Ferrari, service is very lucrative, but fixing an old engine ECU in a 360, you know, it just doesn't bring in the money and it takes people a lot of time to diagnose. Think about the rabbit hole that a, that a dealership tech might go down once he hears a throttle body clicking. They might go and say, you need a new throttle body. So they'll replace it and build a customer for it. And when that doesn't fix it, they'll go and look at the wire. They'll build a customer for it. Again, this car has been out for long enough to where people have figured it out. But the way dealership techs are trained, they tend to not approach problems in a similar fashion as the DIY guys. And that's kind of that feeling I get when I go to specialized ECU repair. They're open to have the discussion and open to show you what's going on so we can make the DIY repair community that much stronger. So if you're on board with that, be sure to hit the like button. Also, if you're not already following me on Instagram, you can go right here and see all the new projects, hint, hint, right here, on there before anything goes live here on YouTube. And also so make sure you're subscribed to the channel. Uh, only like a fraction of the people watching this are actually subscribed and you'll be notified when projects like this are released. And believe me, this is a really interesting one. Guys, I wanna thank each and every one of you for watching today and I'll catch you very soon.